Mr. Corsi here. In this video we're going to explore some of the effects of multiplying complex numbers together. If we start with a complex number Z1 and multiply it by 1, it surely has no effect. And there that's illustrated. There's Z1, Z2. It's identical to Z1. What's going to happen if we multiply Z1 by 2? Well, it appears there's a scaling going on. Z1 has been scaled using the origin uh, with a scale factor 2. And you can imagine what will happen if we try and multiply it by 3. There's a scaling of 3. Let's now look at the effect of multiplying by 2i. Now given what we've seen, we might expect Z1 to be scaled by a factor of 2. Why? Because 2i has a modulus of 2. So let's see if it is indeed scaled by a factor of 2. Well, it appears to be. Let's look at the moduli. We started out with Z1 having a modulus of 0 0.86. We multiplied it by 2i, which has a modulus of 2. And sure enough, the product has a modulus of 1.72. So the Z1 has been scaled by a factor of 2. But you'll now notice that the arguments come into this. Z1 started here with an argument of 1.03. It was multiplied by Z2, which has an argument of 1.57, or pi up in 2. The net result was a rotation by pi up in 2. So we've started with 1.03, and added pi up in 2, which is approximately 1.57, to get the argument of Z1, Z2. So, when you describe the effect of multiplying by 2i on Z1, you would say that there's a scaling factor 2 and a rotation, positive rotation in an anti-clockwise direction, of pi up in 2, which is the argument of Z2. Let's try another example. Can you predict the effect of multiplying Z1 by negative a half i? Well, if we go according to what we've discovered, Z1 should be scaled using the factor a half. It should shrink towards the origin and it should rotate and it would rotate by the argument of Z2. Now if we look at the argument of Z2, it's negative pi upon 2. So we should have a rotation of Z1 by negative pi upon 2 and a scaling with scale factor a half. Let's see if that's the case. Well there's the scaling. Certainly halved. It was 0 0.86. It's now 0 0.43. And the argument, it certainly looks like it's been rotated in a negative direction by pi up in 2. So we started out with a argument of 1.03. We've added a negative rotation of pi up in 2, and we've ended up, in this case, negative 0 0.53. So it has indeed done that. So let's now summarise what we've found. The situation that we're looking at is the following. We've got an investigation looking at the geometric effect on a complex number Z1 of multiplying it by Z2. Now we'll write Z2 in polar form 
Its modulus is R2 and its principal value of the argument is theta2. So what have we observed so far? And remember, these are only observations. We've not proved anything mathematically yet. So Z1 is scaled, first of all, by a factor of the modulus of Z2. And then it's rotated by an angle of the principal argument of Z2. And we need some notes to go with this. First of all, both of these transformations have the origin at the centre. The origin. And secondly, the rotation is positive if the principal value of the argument is greater than zero. That's in an anti-clockwise direction. The arg Z2 is positive. And if it's negative, then the rotation will be in a negative. That's a clockwise rotation. And we can have an argument of zero. Remember, we multiply by two and three, and there is a scaling, but no rotation. And finally, just remember that the principal value of the argument has to lie between negative pi and pi. We include pi, but not negative pi. So, at this stage, it might be useful to increase your understanding if you attempt an example. So, this example has three parts. If you pause the video just now and try them, and then we'll look at the solutions. So, let's tackle part A of this question. 1 plus i. Let's locate it on an Argand diagram. So it's one along and one up. And there's a right angle triangle. These two sides are length one. So let's look at the modulus of one plus i. Remember, that's the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. That's one squared plus one squared. Pythagoras' theorem in that right angle triangle gives us root two. And the principal value of the argument of one plus i Remember, between negative pi and pi, well, there's, from the Argand diagram, we can see it's pi up and 4. So what does this all mean? Well, first of all, it means when we multiply by 1 plus i, this will scale z by a factor of root 2, and it will rotate it anti-clockwise through pi up and 4 about the origin. So let's now have a look at part B, where we're talking about root 2 minus root 2i. And again, let's locate it. Always useful to locate these numbers on an Argand diagram. There's root 2 minus root 2i. And again, we can construct a right angle triangle. We've got two of the sides both being root 2. So the modulus of root 2 minus root 2i the square root of root 2 squared, which is 2, plus the square of negative root 2, which again is 2. So that's square root of 4, which gives us 2 for the modulus. And let's have a look at the principal value of the argument of root 2 minus root 2i. And again, the diagram will help us out. In this case, we've got an angle of minus pi up and 4. And that's in the principal argument range from negative pi up to pi. 
So what does it mean? It means when we multiply by root 2 minus root 2i, we're scaling z by a factor of 2, and we're rotating it clockwise through pi upon 4 about the origin. So finally, let's have a look at part C. In part C, we're investigating negative 1 plus root 3i. And that'll be in the second quadrant. So a right angle triangle can be constructed. One of the sides is 1 and the second one is root 3. So the modulus of negative 1 plus root 3i will be the square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus root 3 squared, which is 3. So again, it's root 4, which is 2. And the principal value of the argument of negative 1 plus root 3i. Well, that's a bit more interesting. If you look at the diagram, and imagine this is half of an equilateral triangle, where each side is 2. And immediately you can see that must be a pi up and 3 angle sitting there. And the argument, the principal argument, will be from the x-axis all the way around there, which is pi minus pi upon 3, which is 2 pi upon 3. So again, what does this mean? Well, it means that when we multiply by negative 1 plus root 3i, that will scale z by the factor of 2 and rotate it anticlockwise through 2 pi upon 3 about Oh. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out and I hope you enjoyed the video.